The Bible predicted thousands of years ago. Not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, not Moscow, not Paris, but Jerusalem would be at the heart of end-time events. This city is often described as the epicenter of future apocalyptic events. The Bible is clear on the scattering and future regathering of Israel in the last days. Because it is a sacred land loved and chosen by God, Jerusalem is also the center of every challenge that God sets to test his people. So what happens in this land always makes people wonder. Essays give it a lot of attention. Recently, the discoveries and mysteries that occurred in Jerusalem have scared all Christians. Join me to discover what terrible thing happened in this holy land. Jerusalem is at risk of attack. Since Israel was founded until now, Israel has never been peaceful. Most recently, we must mention the war between Israel and Hamas. On January 18, residents of the city of Elah in the southern tip of Israel heard sirens followed by loud explosions from missiles of the Iron Dome defense system intercepting an object flying from outside into Israeli territory. The announcement of the Israel Defense Forces later confirmed the above information, saying there were no human casualties after the explosion, but did not specify whether the strange object was a missile or a drone. This is the first time in the past month that the city of Elad has been threatened by objects from outside. So previously to protest the Israeli Defense Forces attack on the Gaza Strip, the Houthi movement in Lebanon repeatedly launched missiles and drones toward Israeli territory. Although Israelis have been told to prepare mentally before each such sudden attack, they are also extremely stressed. Christians all over the world are turning to Israel and praying for them. In addition to the tense war situation, the discoveries in Jerusalem also surprised Christians. Ancient palace was found. Not long ago, archaeologists in southern Jerusalem discovered the ruins of a luxurious two 700-year-old palace. The finds unearthed along a ridge near the Armen Hanitzav Promenade include three limestone column capitals, or toppers, and dozens of stone artifacts per a statement from the Israel Antiquities Authority. Based on the capital's proto alec design, the team dated the trove to the time of the biblical first temple, which was allegedly built by King Solomon around 1006 BC. This distinctive column shape features a triangular flank by two large spirals. Today, the same pattern adorns the Israeli five-shekel coin. This is a first-time discovery of scaled-down models of the giant proto aeolian capitals of the kind found thus far in the kingdoms of Judah and Israel where they were incorporated above the royal palace gates. One archaeologist who directed the excavation in the st The level of workmanship on these capitals is the best seen to date, and the degree of preservation of the items is rare. Fragments of pottery found at the site helped the researchers narrow down the palace's heyday even further, placing its peak during the early 7th century B. See pottery, pots, cooking pots, lamps, and cracked clay objects all date from that time period the archaeologist said. The researchers suspect that the stone mansion was built between the reigns of Ezekiah, who led Judah, between about 715 and 686 BC, and Josiah, who served as king between roughly 640 and 609 BC, likely constructed following the end of Assyrian king Sennacherib's siege of Jerusalem in 701 BC, the estate offers evidence of the region's revival. The Israel Antiquities Authority speculates that the palace's owner may have been a king of Judah, or perhaps a wealthy member of one of Jerusalem's noble families. Regardless of their identity, this mysterious occupant would have enjoyed a commanding view of the first Jewish temple, as well as the area now known as the City of David, or Wadi Hilwa in Arabic. Archaeologists found two of the three capitals stacked neatly on top of one another as if they'd been carefully buried or hidden. Invaders likely destroyed the remainder of the opulent dwelling during the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem in 586 BC, says Yuval Baruch, head archaeologist for the Jerusalem district at the Israel Antiquities Authority. Aside from the buried capitals, any fragments that survived the destruction were probably repurposed in new buildings. The origins of Jerusalem, when King David captured Jerusalem from the Canaanites in approximately 1000 BC, it was a small city situated on a ridge, known today as Mount Zion. Why do you think founded his city in this place? What are the two basic conditions needed for a city to exist in ancient times? The answers turned out to be water and security. You can see the southern slope of the hill 
known as Mount Moriah, is down there under the roots of the palm tree that is beyond the red tile roof. There is a spring that produces 100 cubic meters of water per hour on average. This is the famous Gihon Spring, the only water source in ancient Jerusalem through which David led his army to take the city by surprise. According to the Book of Kings the Thon, the Gihon Spring is where the prophet Nathan and the high priest Zadok crowned David's son Solomon in 962 BC. Solomon's great achievement was building the first temple, which stood on the nearby Mount Moriah for more than 400 years. Sometime in the 8th to 9th centuries, Solomon's descendant King Hezekiah had a channel cut into the rock under the city of David to secure water supply to the temple and surrounding inhabitants in case of an enemy invasion. Hezekiah's tunnel guides the water from the Gihon to the freshwater Siloam Pool Reservoir, the Spring Citadel, the site of Solomon's coronation ceremony, the Spring Citadel, is an enormous three 800-year-old Canaanite fortress revealed after 15 years of excavation, built around the Gihon Spring to isolate and protect the city's water source. The fortress walls are 7 meters wide, and each stone measures 2 meters to 3 meters. The Spring Citadel was in use until the Babylonians destroyed the first temple in 586 BC. It appears to be the largest fortress built in the land of Israel until the time of Herod. If you look at the mountain opposite, you will see that nowadays there is a slope you can climb. But thousands of years ago there were just a series of cliffs, one above the other. Cliff, surface, cliff, surface. This meant that if an enemy army wanted to conquer the city, they had to climb several cliffs to reach the wall. A half millennium ago, the Ottoman Empire's Sultan Soli, the magnificent restricted access even more by building the old city walls. A team of archaeologists discovered a four-meter-thick wall running from east to west on top of the mountain. Then, they uncovered another wall, six meters wide going north to south. Where these two walls meet, they form a corner of what, judging by the thickness of the stone, was not a private home. Mazur dated this corner to the 10th century BC 3-0 plus years ago to the days of David and Solomon. Could the spot where these two walls meet be a corner of King David's palace? The Biblical Siloam Pool The Siloam Pool has long been considered a sacred Christian site, even if the correct identification of the site itself was uncertain. According to the Gospel of John, it was at the Siloam Pool where Jesus healed the blind man. The Siloam Pool is adjacent to the area in the ancient city of David known as the King's Garden and is just southeast of the remains of the 5th century church, and pool traditionally believed to be the sacred Christians. The original city of David was not built where today's old city stands, but on a ridge outside the present old city walls. Excavations in and around the city of David uncovered several ancient water systems that brought water from the Gion Spring in Kidron Valley to pools inside the city, including the Pool of Siloam. For Christians, the Pool of Siloam is where Jesus restored a blind man's sight, and for Jews, it is significant as the water source for ritual purification in the temple. Today, the Pool of Siloam is outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem on the slopes of the city of David, the original site of the city of Jerusalem. By the 17th century BC, the Canaanites had built a tower protecting Gihon Spring, connected to the city walls by fortifications and a tower protecting the pool. Excess water was released into the Kidron to irrigate farmland, but this gave attacking troops access to fresh water. King Hezekiah cut off access to the Jihun Spring, an upper pool, and built a new underground tunnel to protect Jerusalem's water source. As with many sites in the Holy Land, the origins of the Siloam Pool reach back even further in history, at least seven centuries before the time of Jesus. Judas King Hezekiah, late 8th century BC, correctly anticipated a siege against Jerusalem by the Assyrian monarch Sennacherib. In the 2 Kings, chapter 20, verse 20, we read how King Hezekiah built a pool and conduit to bring water into the city. This 8th century BC underground channel is known as Hezekiah's Tunnel. The tunnel is 533 meter long, an average of 60 sumeters wide and 2 meters high. Hezekiah's Tunnel brought water from the spring to the Pool of Siloam, also known as the Second Temple Pool and the Lower Pool. Whatever its original purpose, the Siloam Pool, where Jesus healed the blind man, is an important Christian site. And its discovery represents a watershed moment in the field of biblical archaeology. The Pool of Siloam was still in use during Jesus' lifetime. 
In John 9, 7, we read how Jesus rubbed mud on the eyes of a blind man and told him to wash his eyes with the waters of the pool of Siloam. The blind man's sight was miraculously restored. At the time, the pool of Siloam would have been a gathering place where people came to get fresh water and where pilgrims stopped for water en route to the temple. The pool may have been used as a Jewish ritual bath or a Roman-style bath for swimming. Following the first Jewish-Roman war in 70 AD, the pool was destroyed, and over the years rain washed soil down from the surrounding hills until the pool was covered completely and forgotten. In the 5th century AD, the Byzantine Empress Eudocia built the Our Savior the Illuminator Church and a pool at the end of Hezekiah's tunnel to commemorate the site of Christ's miracle. For years, this was the traditional site of Christ's miracle this narrow rectangular pool has survived, and today is surrounded by high stone walls. This is where walkers exit Hezekiah's tunnel. The ruins of the Byzantine church can be seen nearby. The Pool of Siloam is important in the account of the blind man who was healed by Jesus. The pool was not small, but was in fact so large that a man could step down into it. The blind man may have washed his entire body or just his face and eyes. The blind man responded in obedience to Christ. As a result, he could see the light of the world sent to the world to heal and save. In John 9, he gave sight to a man who had never seen light. It reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world, and he forgives the sins of those who believe in him and trust him to forgive them. Are you searching for God so that you can also be a Christian and go to heaven? Guy Hand Springs To access the water source, an impressive underground tunnel was built, which led to the water source underground and therefore out of range of enemy weaponry. Today, tourists can walk through this ancient tunnel. After descending the stairs, we are in the ancient fortress. From the source, some of the water was channeled into a pool for storage at this pool. King Solomon was likely coronated according to Jewish sources. It was a custom to anoint kings by a flowing water source. This symbolized that their reign should be as endless as the flowing waters. Some of the water was channeled through a tunnel that watered the gardens below in the Kidron Valley, many archaeologists claim that it was through this tunnel that Joab, King David's general, entered to conquer the city from the Jebusites. Under the Judean monarchy, this water system continued to be used until Hezekiah made a new tunnel, which dried out this tunnel. Today, this is the dry option for tourists who want to walk the Bible without getting wet. During the time of the very righteous King Hezekiah, the world's undisputed superpower was the ruthless Assyrian Empire. They were conquering the known world at that time and had never lost a battle. They were the largest army up until then, with 185 Ars troops. After the Assyrian king Sennacherib had destroyed the other walled cities of Judea, including Lachi, his troops began to march towards Jerusalem. In preparation for the war, Hezekiah built a new city wall. He also wanted to ensure that his enemies would have no access to water. As mentioned, the Canaanite tunnel, which was still in use at that time, had holes in it which watered the gardens below and would have provided ample water to the seeking Assyrians. Therefore, Hezekiah sealed up the upper Jihan spring, which flowed through today's dry tunnel and re-diverted the water underground, leading it westwards to a pool at the bottom of the city of David. He then dammed and built a wall around so the water was entirely within Jerusalem's city walls and not accessible to the attacking Assyrians. This water system continued to be used for centuries, including the entire Second Temple period, until 70 C, when both the temple and much of the system was destroyed by the Romans. The water led to the Shiloh Pool, and according to Jewish sources, it was from this pool that the Sin waters were gathered and mixed with the ashes of the Red Heifer. This water was then sprinkled by a priest onto someone who had become ritually impure due to of having been in contact with a corpse. For example, the person had simply been to a cemetery or was in a room when somebody died. The person who had the water sprinkled upon them then became purified. This was extremely important because it is forbidden for Jews to enter the temple while in this form of impurity. Once this holy ritual was performed, a Jew could then ascend to the temple mount. This biblical prohibition is still in effect today, even without a temple, until the next red heifer is found according to its very strict specifications, which Jews believe will be in the days of Messiah. Ascending to the Temple Mount is forbidden for Jews, as everyone is presumed to have this impurity today. Every year on the Jewish festival of Sukkot, when the temple stood, the cherished commandment of the water libation was performed. Water was gathered from this pool, brought to the holy temple, 
and poured upon the altar. The joy that accompanied this procedure was so intense and palpable that according to Jewish sources, one who has never seen this, rejoicing has never experienced real enjoyment. Archaeologists explain that subsequent generations of David's dynasty would have continued occupying this palace. Thus, it would be reasonable to expect to find evidence of the last king of Judah who could have used the building, namely King Zedekiah. In 2007, they found two charred pottery seals near that corner. From the time of the destruction of Solomon's temple, each is inscribed with a Hebrew name, Yehukol ben Shalamia and Gedaliah ben Paschor. What is the connection between these seals and David's palace? In the days of King Zedekiah, the prophet Jeremiah predicted the destruction of the city. The Bible tells how infuriated by this news. Zedekiah sent four of his ministers to throw Jeremiah into a pit. Two of the names of these ministers match up with the names found on the preserved seals. Yehuko ben Shalamia and Gedaliahu ben Pasgor, a pediment table, discovered in its proximity, currently on display in the Israel Museum, also dates to the time of David. A replica of the original now hangs opposite the corner of the probable palace. An engraving of the same design appears on the current Israeli five-shekel coin. The remains of a first temple era, four-space private home sit at the foot of what is likely David's palace. Two of the house's columns are still standing. A display cabinet nearby reveals a model of the two-story house intact. Similar four-space buildings can be found all over the country in archaeological sites of that time, approximately 97586 BC. The owner was clearly a rich man because of the proximity of his dwelling to the king's palace and because of a private toilet with a separate entrance in an extra downstairs room. The toilet contained two 600-year-old bacteria, revealing that the last person to use it ate a green salad and uncooked meat. Eleven separate civilizations, west of the entrance to the city of David. The GTI parking lot excavation has become the largest active archaeological site in Jerusalem and the guardian of clues to eleven separate civilizations. In 2008, the dig uncovered the basement of a large Roman villa believed to have belonged to the Assyrian Queen Helene. She converted to Judaism and moved to Jerusalem in the Second Temple period. A single gold earring inlaid with pearls and precious stones was also found and possibly belonged to her. The same year, a cache of 264 gold coins was discovered hidden inside a wall of a Byzantine building, and the dig experts dated the coins to 613 C at the Abbey of the Destruction of the City at the Hands of the Persians. These are just two of a long list of outstanding archaeological finds at the City of David National Park. Although Jerusalem constantly faced catastrophic events, at least during their most precarious times, there were constant discoveries that reminded them of God's presence. May the people of Israel always be steadfast in waiting for the Lord's Day of Salvation. Christians all over the world will pray for you. Ebrez Place